Hello, everyone. Welcome back. So we're going to read scene four, the banquet scene today of act three. Okay, so we're still we're at the height, I would say this is like really maybe the height of the play, the climax, um, very intense scene, also very difficult to read in this way. So um, I, I thank you for your patience with me. I'm going to do the best that I can. Okay, it might be a long one. Um, but it is a very, very important scene, okay? So before Macbeth, right, and before all the characters, there is a large table, and it's set up with all sorts of food on it. Um, this is a banquet in Banquo's honor, so to speak, okay? Um, Macbeth says, you know your own degrees, sit down at first and last, the hearty welcome. So he welcomes everybody. They all take their seats. Thanks to your majesty, everybody replies. And Macbeth says, our self will mingle with society and play the humble host. Our hostess keeps her state, but in best time will require her welcome. Pronounce it for me, sir, to all our friends. For my heart speaks, they are welcome. So the Macbeths are doing what the Macbeths are doing best. And they are being, um, you know, two-faced here. They're welcoming. They're being good hosts. Now the first murderer is standing at the door and Macbeth spots him, okay? See, they encounter thee with their hearts, thanks, but side, both sides are even. Here I'll sit in the midst, be large in mirth, a nun, will drink a measure the table round. So he excuses himself from the table to go over to talk to this murderer. There's blood upon thy face, he says. So the murderer has blood on his face, okay? Um, and the murderer tells him it's Banquos, okay? Macbeth says, "'Tis better thee without than within, is he dispatched? My lord, his throat is cut, that I did for him. Thou art the best of the cut throats, yet he's good that did the like for Fleon. If thou didst, thou are non-parallel, right? So you would be unparalleled, right, if you also killed his son Fleon. Now the murderer reports, most royal sir, Fleance is escaped. He tells Macbeth, Fleance has gotten away. Aside to himself, then comes my fit again. I had else been perfect, whole as the marble, founded as the rock, as broad and general as the casing air. But now I am cabin cribbed, confined, bound in saucy doubts and fears. He turns back to the murderer, but Banquo's safe. Okay, so he is expressing that, yes, He's happy Banquo's dead, but he is not yet satisfied because Fleance is free, okay? I, my good lord, safe in a ditch he bides with 20 trenched gases, gashes on his head, the least a death to nature. Once again, okay, this was a brutal murder, the least a death to nature. So, I mean, he was ambushed and brutally murdered, probably stabbed many, many, many times, um, all at the hands of... Macbeth, whether he did it or not, he hired them to do it. Thanks for that. There are the grown ser there the grown serpent, meaning Banquo lies. The worm, Fleance, that's fled, hath nature that in time will venom breed. No teeth for the present. Get thee gone. Tomorrow we'll talk ourselves again. The murderer now exits, and Macbeth, not having paid attention to his guests, is kind of called by Macbeth, Lady Macbeth. My royal lord, you do not give the cheer. The feast is sold. That is not often vouched. Well, tis a making. Tis given with welcome. To feed were best at home. From thence the sauce to meet is ceremony. Meeting were bare without it. She's basically just telling him, get back over to the table. Notice who enters now. It is a ghost, Banquo's ghost comes in and sits where Macbeth had just been sitting. Macbeth says, not having noticed this ghost yet, the sweet remembrance are now good digestion, weight on appetite and health on both. May it please your highness sit. Okay, he is now being urged by his company to join them and to sit at the table. Here had we now our country's honor roof were the graced person of our Banquo present, who may I rather challenge for unkindness than pity for mischance. So he's kind of making this comment. I, I'm sad to see that Banquo is not here. I hope he's just running late and that nothing bad happened to him. Okay. Mm. 
wroth. His absence, sir, lays blame upon his promise. Please, your highness, please it your highness to grace us with your royal company. Again, urging Macbeth to come join them. Macbeth, seeing that the table is full, says the table's full. There's no place for me to sit. Here's a place reserved, sir. So Lennox is literally pointing to a place that to him is available. Where? Macbeth says. Okay. Lennox is like right here. Macbeth's like, I'm not seeing it. Here, my good Lord, what is it that moves your highness? Which of you have done this? Okay. So it is at this moment that he is starting to see this ghost. The lords are all like, unsure of what's going on. What, my good Lord? Macbeth to the ghost. Thou canst not say I did it. Never shake thy gory locks at me. Okay, Macbeth is hallucinating. He is seeing a ghost. He is seeing Banquo's ghost. And he's pointing at him. You can never say I did it. Don't shake your head at me. So Macbeth is feeling guilty for Banquo's murder, right? And he is now seeing Banquo shaking his head saying, you know, that was not good. Roth, gentlemen, rise. His highness is not well. This is indirect characterization, right? We can see from Roth's words here that it is very apparent Macbeth is not behaving in a normal way, okay? Lady Macbeth is going to try to cover for him. Sit, worthy friends. My lord is often thus and hath been from his youth. Pray you, keep seat. The fit is momentary. Upon a thought, he will be well again. If much you note him, you shall offend him and extend his passion. Feed and regard him not. So she says, just ignore him. Okay, this is a momentary fit. This has happened since he was a young man. Just ignore it. If you pay too much attention to it, it's going to encourage him. Okay. She pulls Macbeth aside at this point. Are you a man? Okay, again, she's attacking his manhood. I and a bold one that dare look on that which might appall the devil. Oh, proper stuff. This is the very painting of which of of your fear. This is the air drawn dagger which you said led you to Duncan. Oh, these flaws and starts, impostors to true fear, would well become a woman's story at a winter's fire, authorized by her grand dame. Shame itself. Why do you make such faces when all done you look but on a stool? Okay. She's saying that these visions that you're having are, are the visions that people might, you know, the stories that people might tell sitting around a fire. When all is done, you look but on a stool. Okay. She's trying to convince him that he is losing his mind. And, and really he is. Pretty. See there? Behold. Look. Now Macbeth is pointing to a ghost. I want you to imagine being at this table. Okay. So you're at Thanksgiving table and all of a sudden Uncle Uncle Bob sits up and starts pointing because he's seeing an apparition. He's seeing a ghost. You're going to think Uncle Bob needs some psychiatric help, I think. Okay? So he continues. Why? What care I if thou canst not speak to? If charnel houses and our graves must send those we bury back, our moments shall be the maws of pipes. Okay. He's talking about about if thou canst not speak to, if charnel houses in our graves must send those we bury back. Okay, he's admitting aloud to this entire room some of the things that he has done, right? The ghost exits at this point. Lady Macbeth says, what, what, what quite unmanned and folly. You're, you're ridiculous right now, okay? You look ridiculous. If I stand here, I saw him. Fie for shame, she says. Blood hath been shed ere now in the olden time, ere humane statuette purged the gentle wheel. Aye, and since two murders have been performed too terrible for the ears, the time has been that when the brains were out, the man would die, and there the end. But now they rise again with twenty mortal murders on their crowns and push-ups from their stools, from our stools. This is more strange than such a murder is. Okay, Macbeth is saying this out loud, right? 
he's talking about the ghost and how he can appear like this suddenly and and everybody is kind of witnessing this so not good for Macbeth. Lady Macbeth says my worthy thane your noble friends do lack you. I do forget do not muse at me my most worthy friends. I have a strange infirmity which is nothing to those that know me. Come love and help to all then I'll sit down Give me some wine, fill full, okay? He's definitely frazzled right now, okay? But he's trying to maintain composure. Now, you might be wondering, well, why don't these people just get up and leave, okay? At this time, he really had to behave in a certain way. So they would um, probably also be a little bit afraid of Macbeth at this point. So they are remaining in place um, as they are told to do. And uh, now the ghost comes back, okay? I drink to the general joy of the table and to our dear friend Banquo, whom we miss. Would he were here to all and him we thirst and all to all, our duties and the pledge. And they're all in the midst of about, you know, to cheers their glasses and, and kind of ironically cheers Banquo. And Macbeth to the ghost now seeing him again, says, Avant, quit my sight, okay? So maybe he had sat down and tried to get his composure back, and then he sees this ghost again, and he gets up again, right? He gets up, and he's like, quit my sight. Let the earth hide thee. Thy bones are marrowless. Thy blood is cold. Thou hast no speculation in those eyes which thou dost glare with me. He's talking to this ghost. And he's trying to get the ghost to go away. Think of this, good peers, but as a thing of custom, tis no other, only it spoils the pleasure of the time. Lady Macbeth is trying to get everything under control and explain Macbeth's behavior, okay? To the ghost, Macbeth continues, what man dare, I dare, approach thou like the rugged Russian bear, the armed rhinoceros, or the hierarchan tiger? Take any shape but that, and my firm nerves shall never tremble or be alive again, and dare me to the desert with thy sword. If trembling I inhabit, then protest me the baby of a girl. Hence, horrible shadow, unreal mockery. Hence, he's telling the this ghost to get out of here. Okay, the ghost leaves. Why so, being gone? I am a man again. Pray you, sit still okay so he's going back and forth when he sees the ghost he's freaking out and then when the ghost disappears he's able to regain his sanity lady macbeth says you have displaced the mirth mirth is is general laughter and and happiness okay so she's frustrated with him at this point and she says you have displaced the happiness you have broke the good meeting with most admired disorder and Macbeth responds, can such things be and overcome us like a summer's cloud without our special wonder? You make me strange even to the disposition that I owe, when now I think you can behold such sights and keep the natural ruby of your cheeks when mine are blanched with fear. He is absolutely, how can you be so fine when there was just a ghost in our presence, right? He doesn't understand that they, that they cannot see what he just has seen. And Roth, having a little bit of courage, says, what sights, my lord? And Lady Macbeth answers him, okay? I pray you speak not. He grows worse and worse. Question enrages him. Go at once. Good night, okay? Stand not upon the order of your going, but go at once. So usually you would leave in order of degree, okay? So remember how we talked about Thane of Gloms, then Thane of Cawdor, then Prince of Cumberland, then King? Those are the stations, okay? So here, there's other stations and these people would, would exit according to their degree. Here, Lady Macbeth says, you guys gotta get out of here. Don't worry about leaving in the right order, just leave, okay? Lennox says, good night and better health attend his majesty. Okay, everybody is like uncomfortable and starting to file out of the banquet hall. Lady Macbeth, a, a kind good night to all. 
the lords and all but Macbeth and Lady Macbeth leave. It will have blood, they say. Blood will have blood. Stones have been known to move and trees to speak. Augers and understood relations have but maggot pies and chuffs and rooks brought forth the secretest man of blood. What is the, what is the night? Almost at odds with morning, which is which? Lady Macbeth is losing hope. I love the movie. I wish you guys could see the movie interpretation of this here because the, her delivery of these lines, you know, she, she's saying that there is, it, it's indiscernible, right? We can't tell um, what's night and what's day anymore because they are in a constant fit of, of paranoia. Macbeth, how sayest thou that Macduff denies his person at our great bidding? So Macbeth, is letting us know here that Macduff had been invited to this banquet, but he told Macbeth no, that he would not attend this dinner, okay? And so Macbeth is obviously not pleased with this. There's more people who are now um, becoming suspicious of him. And after what he just displayed at this banquet, I'm sure that many people, okay, are going to start to suspect Macbeth, because he practically just admitted what he has done. Did you send to him, sir? Talking about Macduff. Did you invite Macduff? I hear it, by the way, but I will send. There's not a one of them, but in this house I keep a servant feed. I will tomorrow, and betimes I will to the weird sisters. More shall they speak, for now I am bent to know by the worst means the worst. For mine own good, all causes shall give way. I am in blood, stepped in so far, that should I wade no more, returning were as tedious as go over. Strange things I have in head, that will to hand, which must be acted ere they be, they may be scanned. Okay, so let me go back here for a second. And again, bear with me, guys. This scene is tough. So Macbeth says, um, there's not a one of them, but in this house I keep a servant feed. He is now not trusting anybody, and so he's keeping spies in his house to report to him when people are acting in treason or maybe suspiciously, okay? He also tells us that he will to the weird sisters, so he's going to uh, go back and try to find the witches to um, get them to speak more because he's bent to know the worst for the worst. He wants to know what the future holds. And then he says, I am in blood, stepped in so far that should I wade no more, returning were as tedious to go over. So he's saying here that he's so far into this mess that to turn around would be just as bad to keep as to keep going, okay? So here our epic hero, or not our epic hero, our tragic hero recognizes that to, to turn around would be not good and to keep going is not going to be good either. And so he chooses to continue to truck forward, right? Which arguably is noble, okay? We can talk more about that later. Um, Lady Macbeth says, you lack the season of all nature's sleep. Macbeth has not slept. He's become somewhat of an insomniac, okay? Macbeth, come, will to sleep. My strange and self-abuse is the initiate fear that wants hard use. We are yet but young indeed, and then they exit. So he says we are yet but young indeed. I want you to imagine, right, what he means by that. Who do you think he might need to take care of in addition to, in addition to Fleance? in order to um, suppress his paranoia, okay? All right, that's a long one. Sorry, guys. I hope it helps, though.